Okay. Kumlen Rabat Gemara, we are up to Daf Yud Dalad Omid Aleph. Mishnah. We're continuing the Machlekes in Beishamah and Beishil. Beishamah, Eimri Beishamah says, Tavli, when it comes to spices, we're going to learn there's a difference. But the general rule is anything you could have done before Yom Tov and it would have been just as good as if you do it on Yom Tov. We have no reason to allow you to do it on Yom Tov. We want you to enjoy Simcha's Yom Tov. You should have done it prior. So there's a difference between spices and salt. Salt, you could have done a few before Yom Tov because they don't go off. Spice, on the other hand, as we'll see in the Imara, doesn't stay as fresh. You know, like hers was talking about, it's not as fresh if it's done yesterday as if it was done today. And plus, salt, every, every food that you eat requires salt. Spices, you know, it depends on the mood. Sometimes you put more spices, sometimes less. Sometimes you want, you, you know, you want to make without any spices at all. So therefore, sometimes you don't want to do it too early because you might change your mind. So... There'll be a different degrees of the kind of shinu you want to make when you want to crush spices or versus salt. And Machlech Bishamay Hill, if you need a shinu at all, Bishamay says, Tavli, when it comes to spices, instead of using um, a pestle made out of stone, which is the normal kind of pestle really crushes, they use one made out of wood. And the hamelach, but when it comes, sorry, they need, um, and yeah, and the hamelach and the salt, the pach, the salt, however, they would make it a much greater shin because the salt you could have an of So they first of all they use a pach. A pach is that the, the, the not the pestle but the mortar used to be made out of a stone and it had a little, you know it was concave like a bowl where you can go and squeeze in there and squish it, crush everything. But the salt, you use a pach, we'll use an earthenware rather than a stone, again, to make a much greater shimmy. Or uve eight sapar, Rashi adds the word, or other sites and uve eight sapar, or you can have a stick made out of the um, out of um, wood. Ubeisil, I mean, um, and Basil says, Tavli in the Dorin Dajan, spicy enough to make any change at all. You have to use it on Yamta if you let it crush it. The, uh, the mother shall open, and you could even use. Made out of stone, not a problem. The normal pestle you normally use. It's when it comes to salt, you need to make a shinny, but a slight shinny. Mother shalate. I don't need to also change the mortar itself from stone to earthenware. Says the Everyone agrees. You have to make a shinny by salt. The question is only to what level, to what degree. My time of why are we stricter with salt and spices? We have two opinions. One of them says, every single food item you're going to prepare, you need salt. So you knew about it before, young. So why didn't you prepare? The ink collagen, not every single food item you're going to make requires spices and herbs. And therefore, it could be yesterday, you weren't sure what you were going to make. The Khadam, another one says, that's the reason why we're stricter with salt. All spice and herbs, if you prepare it too much, too much in advance, it, it, it loses its strength and its intensity. But a melech ain't a mafiga time of salt. You could have done it way before Yom Tov. My benai, what's the difference between these two reasons? Ika benai, for example, the yodem my kadei the boil of shulinu. You knew your menu before Yom Tov. So if the reason why we say that we're more lenient with spices because you weren't sure what you're going to use, you didn't know. You should have done it before Yom Tov, therefore you have no excuse doing Yom Tov. But if the reason is because it, it loses its uh, its uh, strength intensity, then you can still do it on Yom Tif. Another example, Inami. Other example, with Marika, with saffron, and uh, saffron as well. Saffron, on the other hand, has longevity, and therefore you should have done it before Yom Tif. But if because you didn't sure if you weren't sure you're going to use it or not, then um, you could do it on Yom Tif. Now you know saffron is a, by far the most expensive uh, spice in the world. Saffron is, is, is more expensive than gold. In Australia, a gram of saffron is about $60. So a kilogram, it's about $60,000. Just unbelievable. Anyway, Amr Rabbi Yehuda, Amr Rabbi Yehuda said the name of Shmuel. Now here comes the third opinion. Rabbi Yehuda says the name of Shmuel. He says anything that you are going to crush, the doichin kedarkon, you can crush it the normal way. I feel the melech. This agrees with our Mishnah, not only with Beisham, but even Beisil, who said also you have to make some kind of a shimmy when it comes to salt, but not as severe, not as major as Beisham. But here comes along Shmuel, who said, if you name Shmuel, you don't have to. Tell him what about me, you don't have to. But I'm at Melo Boy Shinu. It says clearly the Mishnah you do. Says him what he write. Our Mishnah says so, but he follows a Brisa. Who do I make a Haitana? 
the, he follows a brisa that understood that the machlekes of Beshil Basham is not the way Amish understood. The Tanya Omra Meir, and Meir actually says, Everyone agrees that you could crush all the spices normally on Yom Tavim Basham Hosan and salt included with it. If you do it together, the spices you can also throw in salt and crush it the normal way. The only argument is that you want to do salt on itself. Bishami Emi Melech the Pach, the salt on its own needs a shinu. So Melech, you use an earthenware instead of a stone with the eight sapporah and a wooden. Um a spoon. Um rather than a than a, than a pestle, a little and something that you normally do, and how much salt can you even use? The normal amount of salt, or the dose of salt you use for, for roast, which is far less than what you would use for cooking, because the water absorbs a lot of the salt, so you need a lot more salt. And um, not a quantity of salt that you would use for cooking. He still says you can use anything. What do you mean everything? The whole of Sakadata, you think you can use everything? Even things that you know that it's that's You can use the quantity of salt, whether it's uh, for uh, roasting or even if it's for cooking. And we're talking about the normal world. Um, and, and if you can see into hold, you can do crushed salt normally and even a larger quantity. So we see. <clears throat> That, that so that's the opinion that Shmuel is actually saying over here. Um, um, once said to son, when you are going to crush salt, I want you to even to make a small shinny. What's the small on the mark? What's the shinny? Not like it says now, Mishnah, but more like Shmuel, what's the shinny? Put it on a tilt on an angle, hold the, the mortar on an angle, and then go ahead and crush it. Um, the one heard on Yom Tov the sound of crushing salt. It can't be taking place in my house, the crushing the salt this way. Because uh, I told him you're not allowed to. Says so, you're not allowed to. Maybe they're making this the shini we just said. Maybe they're putting an angle that's good enough. So Mor says the sham made have its solo color. He heard the ringing sound. There's a big difference if it's flat or if it's on an angle. Um, if it's on an angle, you don't really get that crystal clear. If it's flat, you're banging straight down. You make much more noise and much more power. When it's on an angle, you don't have that kind of a noise. And he heard the sound. You can realize this is flat. Says he might have a Dilma tablin have Maybe it was spices, and therefore that's why they were making that sound. Because spices, we said before, you don't need to make any shinny whatsoever. You can even have it flat on the table. The, you can have the, the you know the mortar flat. So maybe that's what he was listening to. How do you know the salt? So he says, the tablin the vuchim and nabe kalayu. That the tablin, um, it's kind of like barking. You know, it's the sound of crushing herbs is very different than the sound of crushing salt. And if he recognized the sound, this was the sound of crushing salt. Says the Gemara, Tzad um, Rabbi learned, ain oisin tisni on Yom Tov. You're not allowed to go ahead and crush the wheat into four parts because that requires a very big effort. And on Yom Tov, one thing we don't want you to do is do things that require a big kircha. The ain koichin the machteshes. Plus, you don't use a pestle at all. Now it seems to be a contradiction. First, you say you could use a pestle, but don't break it into four parts, each piece or each kernel a week, because that takes a lot of effort. Otherwise, if you want only two parts, you can. And then you tell me, don't need a pestle at all. So what's going on here? It says the Gemara Tarti, there's two conflicting rules here. One, you know, so which one is it? <clears throat> um, it's, it's, it's not too difficult. It's explaining. Ma, tam, ein, oisin, tisni. You know the reason why you shouldn't you go ahead and, and, and crush it into four parts. Lefisha ein koichib and machteshes. Because he, we don't want you to use a pestle, says the Gemara. So why use an example? Just tell us, don't use a pestle. Blame ain't coaching Marteshes. Let's just tell us, don't use a hammer or a pestle. That's it. What do you have to even tell us about this? Says the Gemara, eat on ain't coaching Marteshes. If you only would have told us, don't go ahead and use this Marteshes. How many I would have thought, how many Marteshes? I would have thought only a large one, which is the normal thing to use. But if you're using a small one, which is not the normal way, not the normal usage, because it's much more difficult, aim a shop, I mean, maybe then you can crush whatever you want, including a tisni into four packs. Kamash Milan come to tell you that you don't make tisni at all. And in other words, 
that what you cannot use any machtashes, even a small one. I don't want the uh, tisni to come up. No, if wouldn't have said tisni, I would have thought that only large machtashes you shouldn't use, but a small one you can. By giving us the example of tisni, you try and tell us we don't. I don't care what kind of machtashes you use. I don't want the end result. So therefore, no machtashes are permitted. Says the of Tanya. Didn't we learn in koichim the machtashes gedolah? I will koichim machtashetana. Here you're telling me that the purpose of this brayzer tell you not to use any size, especially size machteshes. And then we learn somewhere else. Actually, there is a difference between a large and a small. Large is a common usage; don't use. But a small one, which is not common, it's sort of a shino. You can use it. Amar Abaye Abaye says, "You're right." Let's go back to our first brayzer. Kitami la masnisin. I'll go back to the original way we thought. It's two exclusive laws. One law is don't use a machteshes, and that law is only limited to large ones. There's another law. I don't want you to make tisni. And that one, there, even if you're using a small machteshes, which you are permitted to use on your trip, I don't want you to make tisni because that requires a lot of effort. Kitami namasita machteshes doyle. You're right. Go back to the original thing. You're talking about a large machteshes to make it equal to this brisa, the second brisa. Only large pestles, or large hammers, whatever crushes, you're not allowed to use. But um, tisni, I don't care what you're using, you cannot make it because it requires too much of an effort. <clears throat> Let's go back to the way we, you answered before, that it's not two conflicting laws. It's not two laws. In fact, it's one law giving an explanation. I don't want you to make tisni because I don't want you to use a, I don't want you to use a crush, a machteshes. But the difference is, hold on, for hold on. In other words, if we're going to allow... We allow you generally to use a small hammer, but it requires a lot more effort and more skill. So in those places where you can trust your servants, then you can allow them to use large hammers and you know they're not going to cheat and use small ones and, and I'll tell you later, use larger ones. But those places that you don't trust, so um, um, those places that you don't trust um, the servants in your house, they're going to lie and they're going to say they use large ones when actually it's a small ones when actually use large ones then we we uh, we ban it all together. A popper, a popper, equal a bit much more. A popper was came to the house of Shmuel. A poppy was came to the house of Shmuel. Isolate dice. They brought him this uh, porridge. Well, oh, they refused to eat it. Oh, they crushed the sweet into small parts. He refused to eat it. Obviously, because he felt that they used a a large machtesh. You know, you know, the amount of a new machtesh town of the do. How did he know? Maybe they used a small one. The Chazi Dahavi died for he saw that it was they crushed it so, so fine, it could only have been if they used a larger pestle. So as the Gemara of Adilma et Mordu, maybe the Taka did, but it was done yesterday. How does he know it was done today at all? The Chazi Dahavi Kolif Tsare, he saw that it was still fresh, therefore it had to be done just now. Ori by him, a shiny Bay Mashmo. Generally speaking, he would trust, but not in the house of Shmuel. The Ika Pritsus the Abdi, because the Avodim there were, uh, were, I guess, known, or they were, they, they, they violated all of these rules. He couldn't trust them. So why did Shmuel hire these Avodim? Shmuel obviously did trust them, but a puppy didn't. No, they were Pritsus in other areas, not when it came to the kitchen. So Shmuel trusted them in the kitchen. And a puppy, because he saw their behavior in other areas, that they were not behaving properly, he didn't trust them anyway, not even in the kitchen. Says the Gemara, um, the next mission. We learned in Shabbos, you're not allowed to be boided. There's three conditions that you're allowed to, the, the, if you meet these three conditions, you can go ahead and sort. Boided as a normal way of eating is permitted. Boided as a way of preparing a malach is forbidden. So if you do it by hand and you're taking the good from the bad and you for immediate consumption, that's called derech achila. But if you any of those three items are missing, for example, you did it for later. So that's preparing. Preparing is very malacha. Or you're taking the bad out of the good, that's preparing. Or if you are um, using a special tool for it, it's preparing. A fork is not considered a tool for it, but a fork is considered an extension of your hand. That's why the big machleg is a poskim if you're allowed to take bones out of fish. And many poskim you're not allowed to, some of you are allowed to. Some tzedek is a bit lenient, but um, you have small bones that you cannot <clears throat> readily take out so easy. Says the Mishnah, what about Yom Tov? Do we have laws of Boyer and Yom Tov or not? So the Mishnah says, Haboyer, so Machoy Bishamisil. Haboyer, kidneys, be Yom Tov. Somebody wants to be Boyer, kidneys, legumes, and Yom Tov. Bishamisil, and Bishamisil says, you can only do it like Shabbos. Boyer, Oichel, Boichel. You take the food from the from the, the good from the bad and you eat it straight away. That's our gears in the Gemara. <coughs> and Basil says, no, 
Boiled kedarka, but still says and yamta. There's a slight little thing of bar. We don't want to use a sieve and all that, but we're going to be far, far more relaxed on Shabbos. <coughs> so boiled kedarka, you can do the way normal way of doing boiled. You know, taking the bad out of the good, you can do that. Take the bad out of which Shabbos you're not allowed to. But bechekay, not the most common way using the sieve or anything else, but use putting in your pocket, shaking it around, or canoeing this funnel or the tamchi, which is a large plate, and you just shake it around. I have a lay bit table, not putting it on your big table. When you put it, you throw it on your table, it, it automatically, you know, it's very easy then to sort it out. That's already, it looks like a malacha. The lay bit nafa, the lay bit quota. Not in the small sieve or a large sieve, that you're not allowed to do. Uh, because that's already, since it's also maternal and Shabbos, we don't, do that on Yom, we don't want you to do that on Yom Tov either. Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel, Oymet, he says, which another um, option is, Af Medea, he can fill it up with water, and then Vishayla. And you can see that the the, the 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 waste part will float to the top, and and it separates by itself, and you can separate that way. Thank you, my time. Remember, remember, remember when when do we say this thing that basically allows you to take the bad from the good? Because it's less tich. Remember, tich is very important. Is the overarching requirement on yamzif. So if there's more good than bad. Taking, allowing you to take the bad of the good is, is actually a, 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 a less tircha, makes it easier. So fine. There's more psalas than oichel, and we allow you to take the psalas away. It's a much bigger job. It would have been easier to take the oichel out of the psalas than you're allowed to. Do it. How come the oichel is the psalas? Then you take the oichel and you leave behind the psalas. So the mother, if, if, why tell me this chidish? If there's more psalas than oichel, then we look at this food, the composition of food, we'll say this is muktzah. Because the the the, the meat is bottled to the right, and you can't move it at all. So let's move a little meat. Come on and show you who allows it. If Tommy Basil says in this case not allowed, as if somebody else you are allowed to. So line up. See, we need is when we say more psalas than oichel, we don't mean literally in, in quantity. We mean that the difficulty of extracting the psalas, even though in quantity wise it is less than the than the oichel, but the effort to remove, extract it or to, to extricate it is far greater. The nafish betircha bezutu b'shira. As far as shear is concerned, it's a smaller or lesser amount. So it's no problem with here or whatever. But the thing is, it requires a greater effort. And he was made a, So in that case, take the good, take the oichel from the psalis. And Lulu says, af madiyach, he can fill up with water with shayla, let this, and let the, the junk part flow to the top. Tanyu, and Abra, 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 Full of lentils, or matzifin all of mine, floated with water, filled up with water, and benimza oichel lemata. The food would sink to the bottom. Upsaylus lemayla, and the psaylus, the waste would go to the float to the top, would surface. So as you know, we turn another brayse equal way around on the counter. We learn that the waste falls to the bottom, and the food flows to the top, like kasha. Depends on the waste is. If the waste is afro, then the sand will fall to the bottom. And how big if it's straw, the straw flows to the top. So it depends what the what the waste of silas is. Next Mishnah. The Shammai says, Ain Mishalchin be Yamtiv, you should not send each other gifts on Yamtiv Elamanus. Only something which is prepared, not something that you're gonna use tomorrow or the day after. It has to be only food uh, that you can use straight away. You know, that's already cut up and everything else. Manus portions that are already ready to be eaten and consumed straight away. And we learned from that Mishlech Maras and Purim as well. You have to eat food that, that can be eaten for the Suda of that day. And Basil says, no, Mishalchen, you can send even gifts, things that you cannot use straight away. Behema, Chaya, the Oif, Ben Chayin, Alai, Meshchutin, the slaughtered. Mishalchen, Yenus, you can send wine, Shemani, Moil, the salsas, and flour, the kidneys, and legumes. But one thing you shouldn't do is Tavua, because Tavua cannot be used at all. Even with the net, because the only way you can use tour is by grinding it. In, and Yamtiv, we don't permit grinding. Because <clears throat> grinding is something you could have done the day before. There's no excuse to do it on Yamtiv. And it doesn't in any way affect or impact on its, uh, on its taste. Uh, but Shimon Matib a tour. Shimon goes further. He says, even tour. Why? Because people sometimes don't, don't want to grind it. They can eat it whole grains or they cook it. And then afterwards, um, crush it a little bit with the kind of pest we learned before. Rabichil said, not a common name we have in the Gemara, Rabichil, you want to send someone gift, fine, but don't send through a lot of people because then it's called Afsha Milsa. You're making a lot, you're attracting a lot of attention, and it looks like you're going, you're making a sale, which is a whole parade. 
And what's uh, considered a parade? Tana ain shul the pchusim shloish mil a minimum of three. If you send more than three people, three people more is like a parade. Boy, Lavashi, Lavashi asks a question. What about klosa gavre? But klosa mini. You send three people, but each person is carrying another food item in the hand. What happens then? Is that considered a parade? Or because each one is carrying something else, it's not considered a parade. And people are not going to mistake think, mistakenly think that you're going to the market to sell things. Take whom? So it's a question. <clears throat> Wheat that would make some kind of food out of it called Ludias. Bali can give feed to his animal. Adoshim lentils lasts in the hand, the sisi, some kind of food that's made out of lentils. So, therefore, because it's you could use it the way it is, you'll have to send it as a gift. Mishnah. <coughs> Meshalchin Kalim, not only food, you can also send clothes, for example. Bain't footing, bain she ain't footing, whether they're sewn up or they're not sewn up. But afa pishi yesh ben klein. Even though they might have clients, so the oral will discuss klein, how can you even benefit from it? Remember, whatever you send on yomtiv has to have some use on yomtiv. And well, so what use can you have from klein? We'll soon see. The hain let's say the chamoid, as long as they have some necessity on yomtiv. Avaloi sandal hamasumit. Do not send a sandal made out of wood that has leather around it, and it has full of these long nails holding it down. Because remember, we learned an incident in Shemsef the Shabbos where people were hiding in a cave in fear of the government, and then they heard these noises up on top, and they thought that it was the government soldiers who found their hidden, their cave, their hiding, but really it was Eden who looking for them so they can hide as well. So they all crushed each other, and the nails killed each other, and he said that, that they, they killed each other, and, and the consequence of that is far greater and what the government would have done. So they made a gzeda, you shouldn't wear a sandal on the super and Shabbos on Yom Tov. So even though <clears throat> you could wear it, we don't want you to. But like minal, nor a shoe, she'enu tougher. If a, a shoe that is even, you know, that isn't sewn up, if you fall apart, obviously you can't use it, so therefore you're not allowed to send it. Rabbi Huda, I met af like minal lovin. In Rabbi Huda's region, he said, I only wear black shoes. They didn't wear white shoes. And therefore you cannot send a white shoe because anything that requires more work and more effort you cannot send on Yom Tov. There's a total of woman. It needs still some more um, uh, work to turn it black. That how the rule is. Anything that you can use today on Yom Tov and you can adorn yourself with it on Yom Tov. The way it is, you can gift it. Otherwise, you can't. You can use it as clothing, article of clothing. Fine, of course you can send that. Change one, even you some material which is not sewn together, you can still use it as a cover. It says in the mission you can send them client. What can you do with client? He can place it underneath it. It's not so, but Tanya will never write it. We says regarding climb, we don't want you to climb, should be um, um, on top of you. But you're allowed to. The Chacham said, We don't want you to use like linen or something underneath you. A thing of climb, why not? Because we are concerned. Maybe one thread will loosen and it'll unravel, and then it will surround itself on your flesh, and it's pretty thick, this particular thread. And you're going to benefit from the warmth of that thread. Is, is providing for you, and that's already Easter of Klein. The Chitema, there is a way you can use Klein, and therefore you're permitted to send it on Yom to how the Mafsig Mide Bene Bene, put it underneath you, put some uh, something in, in, um, in, in uh, between you and that Klein, and this way there's no Shash of that thread unraveling, and you're having any benefit from it whatsoever. It's like, but still not so clear. Bamar of Shimon Pazi and Shimon Levi, Shimon Pazi said the name of Shimon Levi. Omar Rabbi Yisim and Shaul said the name of Rabbi Yisim and Shaul. Omar Rebbe in the name of Rebbe. Mishum Kohola Kadish Yerushalayim, the holy community of which we had them set for sukkah. They used to walk around the Lulav all day. So these people, Afila Esem Mitzvahs or Gabbes, even if you have ten different matters, one above the other, the client Tachtaim. So you had ten things intercepting uh, between you, intercepting the client. Nevertheless, Aser Lishan Alein, we don't want you to sleep with the Rabbanon because the possible Yal Alecha, we don't want you. So what possible use can you have from the client? Ella says, you know how? Use it as a curtain, as a, as a doorway, a partition. So nobody's wearing it. So even though it's client, you're allowed to put it as a partition. The title only bans, proscribes if you're wearing it. So different, different from what it says. The Gemara, what are you talking about? 
Um, why is the din that villain tummy? Why is it that the walls of the house or any partition in your house does not become tummy? And yet a villain, a curtain, fabric, does become tummy. And we said, um, because people can go ahead and benefit from the fact that, um, you, you know, that it, it gives you some warmth that um, you use the, the fringe, let's say, at the bottom of that, and you wrap yourself a little bit to give you some warmth. So therefore, it has the status not just of a wall, of a partition, but also of a keili. And because you're getting some warmth out of it, it's also climb, problem of climb. Hello, we're talking, you know why climb? You know what, when we permit climb on Yom Because you can use it, because you, when it's very, very rough. So it doesn't give you any warmth whatsoever, and you can sit on it. And there, because it's not giving you any warmth whatsoever, even though it's climb, it's all right. Like Bruno said, name is sure. Hi, Namta, this particular uh, article of clothing. Gamda, uh, that's very, very tough. The Neresh from the city of Neresh is Shari, you're allowed to sit on it because it doesn't give you any warmth whatsoever, even though it's climb. Amara Papa, Papa said, Ardlin, that this is something they used to put between their foot and their shoe. Um, and, and they just put some hide on it and something, and um, and it was very very tough. Ain't them from climb again because it's not something that's that's comfortable, and it's very very rough, and therefore there's, there's no climb. Amar Rava, Rava said, include here. Rava said that Tzardi um, Lipshiti. Uh, let's say something where you put money in, even though it's a, bit, it's a material bag, a bag made out of material, and it's climb. And you put money there, you're allowed to put them in your pocket. And why? Because the money cools it down and makes it rough and doesn't, and this, even though it's it's cloth that's surrounding the you know the wallet, it doesn't give you any warmth. Ain't behemoth from climb. There's no climb there at all. But the bizrani, if let's say what you put inside it, you store inside this, this particular wallet, is not money, but seeds. Then yes, behemoth from climb. And you now put them in your pocket because they don't cool it down, not rough, and therefore you are getting some kind of a benefit. And Abashi concludes, I think there's no claim at all. No one uses the wallet to provide warmth to you and comfort. So therefore, there's no problem of claim. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow.